Rack them up because this one's going to get weird. It's going to get definitely going to get weird, ladies and gentlemen. We are joined again by Leonard Lowe. Welcome, my good friend. It's good to see you again. Good evening, or is it good night with the Americans over there? Uh, uh, what time is it's it? It's barely three o'clock in the afternoon for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's 10 p.m. for us Scots, you know. It's, it's time zones are crazy. Getting close to so, guys, bedtime. I would like to be everybody. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll only on for an hour. Um, you can go to your bed and dream about ghosts and ghouls and all those strange things mm -hmm. that go bump in the night. But mm -hmm. everybody in the chat, thank you for coming, guys. <laughs> everybody in the chat, thank you for joining us. Um, it's going to be an interesting show tonight, guys, because we're going to be talking about hauntings. And Leonard was actually talking before we started, and it's very interesting. But before we dive into what we're going to talk about, Leonard, can you give yourself a wee punt? Where can people find you if you if they want to get you on their show, or where can people find you? Best best place to get me is on Facebook. That's easy enough. Um, or I mean, I've got an email. It's, it's, I mean, I'm easy to find. I'm an author. I'm an author of seven books, and, and yes. my books sell in America uh, through mm -hmm. through garbage yeah. books and um, uh, Barnes and Noble. Um, Leonard Lowe, Google me, find me. I'm easy to find. Yeah to please as well. Well, we've provided the links below, so that should help oh, people find your stuff out there. Uh -huh. So, Leonard, do tell us all about hauntings. What, what, what can you tell us? What would you say? I'm going to dive right into this. What would you say was the worst case haunting that you've ever experienced? Uh, the worst case. I tell you that the, yeah. the worst case, uh, as in, uh, I, I'd have to say it, it was, it, it was the. Yeah. I went to a, a case in Kennewy. Me and me and my partner. There's, there's two of us that do this. It's me and my, my friend Roger Wilson, mm -hmm. and we we um, Roger's like my tech guy. He if it if it breaks down, he knows how to fix it. He's one of these chaps. Yeah. Um, and um, we were called to a, a house in Kennewy, a little village uh, not far from where I live. And uh, the problem being, uh, it was a but when I go when I go to help somebody out, I'll, I'll go and give them an initial visit. We'll sit down and we'll talk. I'll hear their yeah. stories, and then we'll decide where we're going to take this further. And this is what we did. We went to meet this couple in this lovely wee bungalow house. Um, mm -hmm. We went in. It was fairly modern, uh, an old house, but fairly modern, all dry lined and, and smart. And uh, you know, my first initial feeling was, God, I could live here. This is nice. Uh, and the the guy the guy loved his music and had his guitars and stuff all over the place and it was well set out and the nice couple and then they started talking they they um they had two trap doors that led into the ceiling space one in the kitchen okay. one in the one in the hallway and the woman said at some point we had these wee, wee, wee these wee slaters and the slaters love the damp and the wet and they seemed oh, yeah. to be coming down in loads uh, from this trapdoor hatch. So they wanted to deal with it. They must have a leak up there or something. So they went into the loft of their house, and what they produced was an old suitcase. There was nothing else in the loft, but there was an old suitcase passed away at the back. They brought it downstairs and opened it up, and it was full of uh, Masonic clothes, robes oh. and stuff. Oh. Um and the, the, the weird thing, it was for a woman. Now, I didn't know there was a, a female side of the Masons, and uh, I think they're called the Red Star. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, the, it's the Southern Star. Southern Star, that's it. And, and, yeah, and uh, my grand. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, know, a thing about, I didn't know a thing about the, the, the female side of the Masons. But anyway, this is what it was. It, it was full of uh, gowns and gavels and... Um, mm -hmm regular stuff for for the masons the masonic lodge and um mm -hmm. the guy the guy being a celtic supporter who just picked it up and stuck <laughs> it in his bucket and god that was that gone uh i couldn't wait to get rid of it you could have put it on the internet but no 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 uh so he, he got rid of it and as soon as that was gone the house came alive he said uh we had thumpings oh, yeah. and bangings crashes i started seeing things at night uh and and voices and there was a there's an element of violence in it. Um, the woman woman said she went through to her kitchen to to make a cup of tea just innocently, 
and and bang and all all the all the cupboards opened and she was terrified and all, all she said she could hear was laughing so we went there and um the 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 story the story she was given um i said this this is similar to something i've heard about in the 50 1950 and what it was was um there was a household up in inverness near fort william and an english guy mm -hmm. bought this little croft and he moved off and he got it all nice. Uh, it was an upstairs, downstairs kind of long building overlooking the loch, and uh, mm -hmm. fine until um, these massive roses that blocked the view of the of the windows onto the loch. They they they, they cut the, yeah. the roses down. They sheared them off, and when they sheared them off, the house came alive. And that's uh, interesting. They heard they heard this bang, scrape bang scrape bang, scrape, and there's never anybody there. They couldn't even understand what was going on. Until I went down the village and did some detective work, and I found out the old woman that used to have their place, she used to um, show her roses and win prizes for them, and it was a pride and joy, and they just chopped them down. Oh. And the, the woman was disabled in a wheelchair, refused to go to a home, and she used to get, she used, she used to crawl up the stairs to her bed at night, but she had two kind of... Um, rubber uh, mm. walking stick ends and this is where she do the bang scrape bang scrape pulling herself along the oh floor to her bed oh. now this is this is like straight out a horror film and they saw yeah, her one, they saw her one night things got so bad in the house i'll cut a long story short you can read, read, you can read up on this Mm -hmm. But things got so bad in the house that they dynamited the place. Boom, gone. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll teach yeah. you, Mr. Ghost. Uh, and and it, so the house blew to pieces. Now, this is the story, and it was all because they cut down the roses. Now, this is a story I told to this family in Kennewy. It says, this is similar to what you've done here. You, you've, you've chucked out something that belonged to the previous yes. And, and now they've come alive. So anyway, uh, we agreed to come back in, in a week's time and set up mm -hmm. and investigate the place. Um, but very next, the very next morning, I got a phone call, and it was from the owner. It says, can you come here now? I says, what do you mean? It's, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. It says, I want you here now. Now, what had happened is um, I'd given that story about the woman with the roses in their living room with them. Mm -hmm. You're going to love this. They woke up in bed together in the morning, covered in hundreds of petals of roses in their bed. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, and they they, they they were they were terrified, and um, that's and, something intelligent. But the thing the thing was that the, the, the rose petals were the rose petals were were, were um it was, it was an old they're all withered and old. Um, but uh, the, the, there was hundreds of them, and they were all over us in our own bed. So um, we, we decided we'll start this investigation right now. And we came up and we started recording, and we had voices come through on a tape recorder, a really sweary guy uh, swearing at us. Um, so we started to tease him. I mean, uh, the, the, the Orange Lodge are, are, are famous for being Protestants. So. Yeah. We started, uh, which I believe it, the Rangers were playing Celtic that weekend. So we started having oh, a go, right. and and this thing got really nasty, really, really sweary. And um, it was it was a man telling me to, to f off. And uh, but how we how we do with things is we had the the owners yeah. in, in in the living room uh, watching a, a telly that I was on camera through in the kitchen, and so they could see what mm -hmm. I was doing. And see what I was asking questions. Uh, and although we recorded um, a lot of uh, the voices and things that came through, they were seeing it firsthand. Uh, and and it was it was amazing. Uh, we had we had good communication with this thing. And you know, after after a couple yeah. of hours, um, we got a name from this person, and it, it made sense with who was the last owner. And we got some yeah. details on the last owner was a wife beater and a bit of a drunk. And um, it was all making sense. And we got his name. Uh, and the, the, the house was called Alrose, Alrose House. And mm -hmm. um, because uh, the, the wife's name was Rose and he was Alistair. So this See is, that? we got Alistair coming through, speaking to us, identified himself. But anyway, after, after about two, three hours, 
of this. Um, we decided to stop uh, and and, and yeah. just have a, just have a catch up. And we're speaking to the owners, and they were they were so intrigued at what we were doing. And the woman said to us, "Shall I make you a cup of tea?" And I went, "Yeah, I'd love one actually." So she's got a wee she's got a wee corridor that leads into her kitchen, and mm -hmm. she went into her kitchen and she's chatting away to me, putting the kettle on, and uh, and and she. She, she was a woman in her fifties, and and um, uh -huh. she was quite terrified about what was going on and what had happened to her. And as she's talking to me, and I'm just I'm just leaning against the door, talking away, saying, uh, you know, how things are. And there was there was an explosion, like bang, and I went, Christ! Wow! And and it came from <laughs> it came from the cupboard. She screamed. She screamed. It came from the cupboard next to her, and and uh, she gingerly opened the cupboard up. And there inside, um, there was plates. It was, it was for keeping plates, cutlery, uh, and there was the the top three plates in this uh, in this pile of plates shattered. I mean, it exploded. Um, I mean, and, uh, there was there was. I, I was speechless, and then all we heard was uh, laughing. All we heard was laughing. And that's yeah. that's crazy. But that is crazy because you, you, I wonder. I wonder if it was the spirit. I mean, obviously there was a guy spirit there. Do you right. think? Do you think when that stuff got thrown out, the spirit was maybe the the woman that was attached to let's just say the woman stuff for the the Eastern Star, right, was removed too, and that that guy came alive and said yeah, that well, maybe think, she was if protecting you've, if you've, them. If you've lost someone that that meant something to you, and you say you you, you had a lock of her hair or, or you know, you had a yeah. ring or something, and and then you lost it. You'd be you'd be very upset, and I think this is the same, yeah. the same way with this. Um, this was his uh, his wife's robes of the, the the lodge, and we just binned them. Uh, so there's no there was no bringing them back. Uh, what we did have, what they did keep, they kept the little gavel thing. Yeah, and so we we tried to tempt it with this gavel thing, but it wasn't interested at all. Um, it was it, it was a really um, I mean. I mean, I've, I've I've been in places where things have moved, and you mm -hmm. kind of go, "Well, wait a minute, did that actually happen?" And you look at it, and you go, yeah. "Come on now," and then it moves again, and you go, "Whoa, well, in this case, um, with the explosion in the kitchen, you know, I, I I pulled out the plates and look, I'm looking. This is set up. This is a charge. To put a charge in there and it's blown, yeah. and you know, I'm the stool pigeon. Mm -hmm. Ha ha ha. Somebody's probably filming me just now. <laughs> nah, there was, there, you know, you got, you got, this, everything's going through my head, and I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm hearing somebody laughing, and there's, the, the, nah, there's nothing there in that, in that kitchen. When I opened up the cupboards, yeah, I mean, the, the, the dishes were like rammed full, three, three plates to the, to the roof, you know, mm -hmm. um, and they'd, they'd shattered, and, and I, I, I was speechless. I didn't know what to say. I was like, this. You know, half of it's gone. I've just been, I've just been fooled. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you can also it. Through, yeah, uh, but you know, it's 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 going. It's sitting in the car afterwards and looking at my mate. Yeah, and going, Jesus, <laughs> that actually happened. You know yeah. that this is this. Did is they ever try and follow you home? Did no, they ever try um, and follow you home? But we we came back a second week, and um, the guy the guy. Um, they were, they were quite a religious couple. They were dying to get the house blessed, and I yeah. said, "Don't do that." So yeah. said, I'll, I'll bless the house for you right now, and you, you, you'll just, just sit and fall about laughing at what I do. But they, uh, nothing will happen with this blessing. I'm, I promise you now. And the the um, the the the, the um, we we turned up for the the second week, and we we'd missed we'd missed all the action by about uh, twenty minutes. But what happened mm -hmm. was the, the um, the guy, oh, there's a thing, yeah. Um, the, the woman woke up in the morning for some reason, uh, as she normally did, went through into the, the living room mm -hmm. and just saw something strange on the floor. A wee pile of things, all pink things. Right. What's this? And it was, it was nail clippings, a woman's cut her nails, cut her toenails, mm -hmm. or cut her nails. There's a little neat pile of nails on, on the middle of the carpet. They weren't any hers. She said, "I can where they came from and what it's got to do with anything." See, that's, but they just appeared. That 
What's that? What's that called again? Where spirits can like say take something and take it into a different house. What's it called again? It's got a name. It's for the where they could like say for instance like like the Enfield or whatever house they can yeah, take, yeah, yeah. Like, take an Things object manifest, manifest and the disease, throw it through the wall. Yeah. So it's, it, that's interesting that because wow. it makes you wonder like for where it got the roses free. But where did it get the clippings? Was that the next door neighbours that was doing their nails? Well, it, it, was, nails it was quite, it was the quite disgusting, to be honest. Um, they, couldn't, they couldn't believe who did this. You know, Somebody's come in my house, sat there and cut their nails. This is horrible. And and they kept them, mm. we saw them, and of course, that this, you know, we checked the wife's hands, it's not hers, and she couldn't explain where it would come from. And they, these are the kind of silly wee things that were happening. But the... the um, the man was in the garden doing his gardening, and uh, he said, "I just looked up and I saw the I saw the the, the curtains from the, our bedroom, our spare bedroom, were moving." And I thought, "Oh, mm-hmm. wife's been hoovering." Mm-hmm. And uh, then he, he and then he looked to the kitchen. And he saw his wife in the kitchen. He went, "There's somebody in our spare bedroom." And he went right. And and as he moved, he says, "I saw the curtains." Um, come down like the a whole curtain set got ripped off the wall uh he, he reached the he reached the bedroom and he said the bedroom was chaos um there was this big crystal vase um it, it it just come off the wall shattered against the wall another wall but the the curtains had been ripped uh, and they were like six seven foot curtains they've been ripped from the wall the whole lot the the, the timber and everything been ripped off the wall yeah. and it was the other side of the room and it's just what happened what was this all about what was what was wrong with the curtains and i said it's just it's just wanting attention this is all it's wanting it's just wanting attention and um i mean we, we went back about three four times and um he actually saw it the owner of the house saw it uh, he's watching the football in his living room one night, and there it was standing, looking at him from this mm-hmm. kitchen. Told, I mean, the guy, the guy's a bit like of a hard man. The, the guy's a bit of a oh, hard dude, yeah. you know. And and he was embarrassed to say, I was, I was in tears, I was scared. Um, I says, what did the spirit look like? What did it? What did it? It, it, it was a man. He said, there, there was a man. There was a man just standing there, staring at him. Um, he never described the clothes or anything, but uh, just standing, angry looking. What you doing in my house type of thing um now i said this couple were fairly religious what they did next yeah. was um they went and got a priest to bless the house i says okay. the minute you've done that I t- i'll tell you what will happen now it you'll have nothing happen for a, for a few days and it'll come back with a vengeance and it'll be even worse you've just yeah. antagonized it that's all you've done um and so the the um they said we're going to leave it because we, we don't want we don't they were scared that we were going to we're going to um film them and and you know have another enfield with them in it they didn't want to, they didn't want the attention you know they didn't want how the attention you, which is fair enough um how do you go about getting rid of something like that like, you I, don't how do you, you, you simply about- don't you've got to let it burn itself out like the enfield case like any other guys yeah. case there's no minister in this bloody world that will get rid of the spirit for you but he'll claim he will because it puts money in his pockets um, I'm, I'm yeah. sick of the church getting involved yeah. in hauntings. We're we're past that stage. Um, come on, it's, this is a, this is the twenty twenty second century. Mm-hmm. Leave all the Stone Age stuff behind. Um, you know, I'm sitting in your house. Go on, bless me and get rid of me. See if I move. And that's wake up again. <laughs> let's let's leave all, the, you, yes, leave all the Disney behind people. Come on. <laughs> um, what you have in the house with a with a poltergeist is a, a unique situation uh where you you might have a previous owner in the house which um you can understand why that previous owner's angry or stunned that you're there we don't know how this happens i'm getting a little visitor here here we go oh who's that who's that oh oh that's a cat person person. (laughs) that's that's my little familiar (laughs) i mean it's it's quite interesting that how you say bur- it burn itself out. I mean, if yeah. there's any intelligence, could you know maybe reason? I, again, this is coming for me. Like it's, a, if it had any intelligence, could you maybe know reason where it say, "Listen, come on, you're scaring the family." Yeah, we did all can that. We, we did all that, and we had it laugh yeah. at us. It laugh. But I mean, if yeah. if you, if you've lived in that house for fifty years and you've died in that house, um, mm. it's your house. <laughs> I'm yeah. the intruder. When you think about it, I'm the intruder. 
um, why they haven't gone is yeah. is another reason. It's like like the Enfield case where um, we had Bill, who oh, was that's so angry because it yeah. was his house, and all these people are in it, run about redecorating. No wonder they go daft. The poltergeist, they they don't like the colours or or uh, what you're doing to it. I mean, the I mean the the Enfield case was quite an interesting case, but. As I said before the start of the show, is it the is it the Black Monkey Pointy fract? I mean, they say, they still say that house is still active to this day. Yeah. I mean, I can. Yeah. Is it? I mean, have you ever been there, or have you ever heard anything? No, about I, that I've case? never been in the building. I've never been in the building. I, I was in the Enfields building. I was in. I, I was lucky enough to be um, because I lived in London. Uh, I, I've been to Borley. There's nothing left at Borley. Again, it's yeah. a historic haunting. This, this you know, that is well missed, but I do, I do like what Harry Price did there. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of set the bar for 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 ghost hunters uh, and investigators. Um, I spent. Um, I was probably one of the last few people to spend um, time at the, the the Bedlam Hospital in in High Barnet. Yeah. Uh, that oh, was enormous. Um, well, there was three supposed Jack the Rippers in there as, as, as many uh, uh, you know that was that was a lunatic wow. asylum for for two three hundred years yeah. uh, it was yeah. like a town uh, they had the whole place working where they grown their own crops and living there right, yeah. that we, we turned that place into flats and um I pity anybody <laughs> bought one of the flats oh my God. we, oh, we work, work in there at night um oh no um they, 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 you know before we knocked them down, it was just uh, corridors of padded rooms, and uh, the little padded rooms all oh, leather, uh, full of fingernails and suicide notes rammed into every single little crevice you could find. Somebody had written a suicide nice. note and poked it in, mm-hmm. uh, and you could. We spent half our time reading them. Uh, yeah, not a nice place That's, to work. It's quite interesting because if you think about it, there'll be a lot of like cases with people with hauntings where it's just like a, it's like is it the stone tape theory do you help us mm-hmm. the, oh, it's yeah. like the stone uh-huh. tape uh-huh. where like it's just like a repeating spirit so it's getting up it's going down the stairs it's going into the living room it's going to the door and it does that every night at say half past 10 at night or something like that and everybody sees that but then you get these spirits that are intelligent and they mm-hmm. know that they're pissed off with you because you put a wad doing or you've not something doing that they like yeah i mean it's it's quite interesting i mean you're talking about that mental asylum you're talking about that mental asylum you think about the bits of paper do you think that there's any energy in those bits of paper where they've wrote their oh, horrible horrible um yeah they're, they're, a lot of these um uh, ones that the, we used to pull them out and read them to each other yeah and um i mean i remember i remember there was there was a, a jamaican a Jamaican one, very childish and crayon, mm-hmm. and uh, said, "When I die, I want uh, Peter to have my radio. I want this other guy to have my books." Yeah. And you know, it was it was dedicating where he was wanting his stuff to go, and it was obviously a suicide uh, or whatever happened to the fellow. But um, we 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 worked we worked on these um, we worked these place ready, getting them ready for demolition, and, and then we rebuilt over them. And uh, I remember uh, working there late at night, and and guys coming through to me and say, "We're we're leaving now." I mean, we we worked there twenty four hours. Mm-hmm. We're, we're leaving here now, and it's like half eleven. This is what's the matter. He says, "I won't stay here another fucking minute." And I goes, "What's up?" Yeah. And, and he goes, uh, "In in the room I'm working in, someone's singing. <laughs> someone is someone's singing away, and there's 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 See, only there's me that- here." There's actually a place near me, and it's a lot of people know about it. It's actually it's, it's called uh, Burkwood. Have you ever heard it? It's in I've heard of Burkwood, yes. Uh-huh. It, it's it's in it's in it's in some disgraceful state now. It's I mean it's totally collapsed, and that place is just downright weird. It it just does. Burkwood. It's down. It, there's there's I it's it's it was I think it was it was for children with learning difficulties. But right. it was it was it had its own mortuary and it had its own other kind of part of the building. But that place is I've got a friend that goes to ghost hunting with me. His name's Alan and he'll not go back there because he doesn't like it. There's something there's something dark there. Uh-huh. It, it makes you wonder, I mean, there'll be entities out there that 
like to hang about hospitals, won't they? Like abandoned mental asylums because they'll like the, yeah. the torment. They'll, that's that's what they'll feed off. Of. They'll feed off the fear. See, I, I had a partner who, who was seriously ill and spent a year in hospital before she died. So I was in Archway Hospital every every day, really, for a year. Yeah. Uh, finish work and go straight to hospital. She was she was in intensive care in a coma. Nasty business. Uh, this yeah. is this is um, twenty years ago now, but um, it's it's going to hospital and it's all the hangers on. All these people that go to hospital because there's there's no place for them and they get attention yeah. there and they're all hangers on they're all just yeah. bums really but they get attention in the hospitals and that's where they hang around and you you take that from them and it's the only home they ever had it's sad as hell that is definitely sad because yeah. you think about the hospitals out there that have been renovated and turned into flats like you say yeah, well, the hospital that I'm on about Archway, um, I mean, that's that's where I got my first photograph. Uh, um, oh. I, I was in a hospital for a year and I, I had a, 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 I was doing a lot of research on a, on a building in Pitt and Weem where to, to do with the, the witch trials. Uh, it's from, from my first yeah. book came out, The, the Weem Witch. And um, I, I got some, I had some photographs taken um, inside this building in Pitt and Weem. And it made the Sunday papers, and they put it as a, a they put it as a, a, a middle spread. Uh, and they called it mostly ghostly, which was great. So I'm a, I was a bit of a star. I was a bit of a star in the hospital, and uh, so yeah. the doctors were, were, you know, they got to, they, they'd known me for six months or so already, and they came to me and said, um, they, they, um, the, the, we have a problem in our basement of the hospital." Now, Archway was built in about 13, uh, I think 1388, 1488. Yeah. And it's it was in the time of um, Richard III. And yeah. uh, it was it started off as a leper colony. So mm -hmm. it was a leper colony, and now it's like a huge general hospital with uh, 400 beds or so. But um, the leper colony side still exists, and it's down in the, in the basements of the place. So they said, mm -hmm. occasionally we've got to go down there and get files. It's just an old storeroom uh, and loads of corridors mm -hmm. in a storeroom and there's a boiler down there, but it's horrible. Our nurses won't go there on their own because they keep seeing things. And I went, let me at it. So um, I got my cameras and stuff and I got the administrator of the hospital to take me down there. Mm -hmm. And we went for a visit in the middle of the night. Uh, we got down there and... Um, I saw this strange kind of uh, hydrant for a, fi a fire hydrant embedded into the wall. Yeah. And, and I, I thought that's, that's completely false. So I got the hydrant and fiddled with it and pulled it. And lo and behold, behind it is a complete uh, catacomb of arches. Uh, I've found the old uh, leper colony hospital. Ooh. And so we had a wonder. It was so, um, I, 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 I must have been the first one in this area for, for hundreds of years because the ground was crystallized. Uh, it, it, it would hold me up like snow and then I'd crunch through it. And so I was wondering about wow. this. This um, You could see where every bed would have stood by these huge uh, Gothic archways uh, under the hospital. Yeah. And so, yeah, we, we, we wandered around there and it was fascinating. But then we came out into the corridors um I never had a feeling for anything, but we got into this corridor mm. and the woman with me went, oh, what was that? And I went, what do you mean? She said, something just moved like down this corridor. <laughs> so I went, okay, let me have a look. So I got my camera out and we ventured up this corridor. Now, both sides of the corridor are just files, like cabinets and files. Yeah. And I'm told there were smallpox uh, files from First World War. Oh. Right. So we're, we're, we're wandering up the, the corridor and all of a sudden... Uh, there was something moved, and uh, it was like someone out of Star Trek. Uh, it was hovering in the air and moving and pulsating, and getting closer and getting closer. By this stage, the the woman I'm with is is right. happy. The door. She's she's had enough. But I'm trying to take photographs. I got I managed to get about five photographs of this thing getting closer and closer towards us, and um, and then we legged it. When when um, well, the last picture I took, um, all I could see was a child, like a six-year-old child, floating in the air, um, mid-body, had half his didn't have legs, 
uh, but it was it was a it's child. And the, pho the photographs I took, you can you can you can Google it. Uh, the Archway Leper Boy came out as um, nope, the Archway, nope. Archway Hospital Leper Boy. Just Google my name, Leonard Lowe. You'll see a photograph mm -hmm. of it, uh, and that made that made um, about thirty papers in 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 the um, in the UK, and it went to America mm -hmm. as well. And I was on a I was on a one of the programs out there in which they investigate photographs and stuff. I can't remember who they were. But um, that's the one that hit home and um, got my name in the papers. Since then, I've had about eight photographs in the national the national papers and stuff. So, yeah. I'll need, I'll need to look that up because that's fascinating. I'm going to let my, my co-host Dakota ask some questions. Well, what, what's even more... I, I, just, just to let me finish my story, um, it was. It looked like half a child. I mean, it, it, it's pretty clear. It's it's a, like a six-year-old boy's head and torso, yeah. but um, there's no legs to it. But then, um, uh, with research, uh, I was I was told that the the corridors I was in, uh, they 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 dug down, they dug down uh, about a meter uh, to to make room for the cabinets. So when I say that child was like floating in the air, he would have actually been standing on the floor that was there. You see, the the floor yeah. that removed it to make room for the cabinet. So if this boy was from a previous age, he was standing on the floor that was originally there when he was there. That's fascinating because that's that's like people saying you get into a house that's say totally demolished inside it, and there's no floors and there's no yeah. doors. Yeah, that's no right. Spirits yeah. are living their life out as they would yeah. be. So, and in, in their reality, it's all fully furnished. Uh -huh. But in their the, reality, the hospital, the hospital hates me because that paper, that paper, as I said, it went to it went to thirty different newspapers. All the nationals took it. And all the all the evening standards took it, and um, it made the made the hospital famous for a while, and then and then they got harassed by Ghostbusters wanting to go down there themselves, and uh, oh, then, the then I started. Then I, then, it's a hospital, you see, and and then I started getting uh, letters from uh, mothers who'd lost children in the hospital, who oh. were trying to trying to get me to say, oh, that photograph looks like no, I can't do this. I can't do this, yeah. and, and I, I thought I better just back off out of here because I'm hurting people, and that's what I'm not about. Um, uh, it's... To understand that the, the does it the, did it look like my child? Oh God, I can't do this. Can't do this. Oh. Yeah. So you got to be. You got to watch what you're doing. Uh, it's, you have to. You have to. Go on, you go. Oh yeah. Oh, I, honestly, Chris, I'm fucking dumbfounded. It just I'm. I'm trying to look at the picture right now, but unfortunately, it brings up Robert De Niro as Leonard Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> He's a stand-in. He's a stand-in. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, in you know, it? It must be quite hard for people because obviously they're like their sons and their daughters, or their fathers and their mothers will die there, and they will look at. Yeah. Like, you, for instance, as a ghost hunter, and think, "Oh, did you see my uncle? Did you see my grandmother? Did mm. you see my mother? Did you see these things?" And it must get quite a lot. Well, on but, the same subject as hospitals, um, my, my mother yeah. took a stroke and uh, was was in a bad way in hospital, and I had to come up from London to see her. And she was away in um, Weems, one of the Weems hospitals in Fife, yeah. and they they deal stroke victims and stuff like that so i had to go and visit her and i was i was in and out of the hospital and of course that because i'd been in the papers the nurses knew me and of course they came to me with stories and um they had a cracker um in in the the, the, the weems hospital where um the, the 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 there's a common thing that happens to the nurses there and it's doing the rounds at night and coming to one of the wards uh, opening the doors and they are down all the rows of beds for the patients. Um, there's all these black kids. There's, a, there's there's five six black kids, and they're playing around a bed. And so the nurse will go, "Hey, mm -hmm. hey, hey!" And she'll walk down, shoo them out. And uh, she said, as I got closer to the bed, um, I realised they weren't black kids; they were just dirty. And then they all disappeared. And she said, "I got, I got, I got closer to the bed, and the patient had died." And this is this when she went back to the head nurse to talk to to tell them about what she'd saw, 
to, this has happened to us all. We've, we've all seen this. Now, uh, Weems is 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 uh, famous for its coal mines, and um, mm -hmm. and of course the wee boys went down the mines. We could boys and girls, so age six, went down the mines, and uh, the death rate down there was shocking. Oh, good uh, God. There is records of them. Every month there was a casualty sort of thing. So this mm. hospital that dealt with the the wee kids down the mines, and they're still in a hospital. And for some you know, for some reason, when somebody passes over, they all appear, and they're all dancing around the bed. Help. The nurse sees them. So think it's, fascinating. Do you think it's maybe? Do you think it's maybe they're helping them cross to the other world? I don't know. I'd like to think, think so. It's... That'd be nice. That'd be a nice thing. But they were, they were dancing and laughing. This is the thing the kids she saw, and of course she's she's a matron, so she's like storming down there to give him what scud in the lug, bang, and yeah. um, <laughs> uh, and 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 the, she she just said they weren't they weren't black kids. They were dirty kids. They're all covered in covered in coal dust. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh -huh. that's that's. I think every hospital has a ghost story, and that's the that's oh, the yeah. memes one. I've heard some. I've heard some tales for nurses that I know. Dakota, would you? Uh, I've heard some tales from the hospital here in town. That was barely built like 15 years ago, but then again, you know, like you said, who isn't dying at the hospital? But now, I do want, want to try to, you know, help get this out there. You're mentioning that you're actually getting ready to release a museum this yes. year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. But just before I show you, you want to talk about that, but I'll get the word out. Oh, well, uh, okay. Um, well, then that's why I'm looking so disheveled at the moment, this time of night over here. It's it's nearly 11 o'clock, but I've I've had no mm. sleep last night. I had a big, um, a, a big, a big, what, sorry? A big, a big present. My, my voice in the background here is, is my partner, Ruth, who's keeping me right here. <laughs> my big presentation was today. And uh, it was to get funding for a museum. Now, I don't just write about Scottish witches. Uh, I hold yeah. loads of manuscripts and actual items from the, the, the 16th and 17th century witch trials. I even... Oh, the Americans. Hang on. Americans. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Americans are coming. <laughs> right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. One for the Americans. Right. Are you special. familiar with this tree? Can you see this tree? Aye. I can see it. This is the tree from Boston Common. Yep. It's a great elm tree from Boston Common. And uh, there's a building in the background there. I think it was the, the city courts. And um, what that tree is famous for is um, all, you, all you, you colonial rascals uh, decided to... Uh, <laughs> rebel against us underneath the branches of that tree and um and then we had the boston tea party it was all arranged underneath that underneath the yeah the, 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 the yeah. branches of that tree and this is where the revolution started with all you colonial chaps out there yeah. um and uh well anyway the, the 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 salem tree was also it was also a hanging tree as well um we had, had indian chiefs uh some huguenots got hanged from the branches of it um, with the strict Puritans out there, they didn't like the, the French uh, mm. French religion, but um, but it was also used to hang some of the Salem witches. Some of the Salem witches were hanged on the branches of that tree, the, the great elm in Boston Manor. Mm. Uh, when the when the um, when the tree the tree was planted in in 1670 or thereabouts, and it came down in 1876. It it was it was a very remarkable pinpoint on the map the the boston elm tree and when it came down uh, they're all kind of devastated about it uh, it was very rotted but it uh, you know it lasted a long time and what they did was um the wood that was the wood that they could use they they, they carved a chair out of it and put it in the boston hmm. um boston museum uh and it's still yeah. there but they also made three little books out of it and I have one. Can you see that? Ooh, the great yeah. Elm, the Great Elm planted. The Great Elm planted in Boston Common, sixteen seventy, and it fell in February, 
1876. Basically, I have wood from the tree that hanged the Salem witches. There we go. Take that. <laughs> That's very interesting. It's quite interesting what someone says in the chat there, his son of the Naked Bigfoot, Mike was one of our dear friends, and that's his son. Uh, his dad got a walking stick made from the tree. I'm actually looking at it through the glass in the cabin that it's stored in. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Well, there, there was um, the, 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 the chair is in Boston, Boston Library Museum. It's in there. There's a chair. It's elaborately carved. And they made three little books, and of course I didn't know it was a walking stick, so that's new to me. But um, yeah, it's a nice thing to have. And this this is what's this is what's uh, one of the pieces going into my my museum. I have many Scottish uh, articles. I've got witch prickers. Yeah. I've got all the manu I've got mm. manuscripts, uh, letters. What? One, of the, one of the most horrible things I've got what is, is a witch pricker. What is a witch pricker? Um, I was a sounds like a sex toy. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say it for the naked Bigfoot and there. Right, you brought you've, 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 from here. You've, you've brought you've, you've got a suspect witch in the vicinity. You bring her into the courthouse uh, with the ministers, right. and um, there's a process you go through to find out whether this person is actually a witch. Uh, you will shave her hair off, um, shave all the hair right. off everywhere, and and then examine her. You're looking for a mark on her body, uh, like a, a, a an extra nipple. Uh, this would identify mm. her as, as as being a witch or, or, a, or a, a, a mole or a wart. If you can't find it on her, then what yeah. they do is um, they, they suggest that the mark is in her. And then it was, a, it was employment for a guy called a pricker to have one of these devices. Can, I'll, I'll try and there we go. Can you see that there? It's a it's a, it's like a needle. Yeah. It's like a metal bodkin needle. It's copper and um, it was used to pe it was used to pierce the flesh of the witch every inch in the mouth in the anus everywhere down the legs arms um producing blood every every stab witnessed by others if it didn't mm -hmm. produce blood or it didn't produce pain when they stabbed you uh, that was proof that you're a witch so that this is a pricker this was mm. this was um this one, this one was used in the in, in the seventeen oh five uh, Pit and Weem case, which I wrote about in my book, the the Weem Witch. Um, yeah, yeah. So you know, so I've I've actually got heavy duty articles from the witch trials. Um, one one of the horrible things I have is I've I've got quite a bit on the the Bal Balgarin case, which was in Paisley. And um, mm -hmm. this was a 16, 1697, uh, a highly written about uh, case where a young girl became um, basically possessed in her bed, blaming her uh, household servants. Um, seven of them got burnt as witches. And um, well, I, I have a letter. Uh, see, the whole thing, the whole thing about witch finding is it costs lots of money. It cost it cost oh, yeah. tons of money, and um, it was written into the rule books that once you've processed your witch, um, what properties or boats or farm or any land mm -hmm. which owns now belongs to the Kirk and the civil authorities, they'd split it in half. So it was well worth your your business to find a wealthy witch amongst all your your ragamuffins, and uh, and make it worthwhile. But if you didn't, then the, the council was going to get left with an awful bill for persecuting witches. And yeah. I've, got a letter, I've got a letter here um, pursuing the family of uh, the burnt witch called Catherine Campbell, uh, mm -hmm. basically because um, she was a servant. And after her, um, after her burning, uh, they sold what she owned and it never reached near what it cost to burn her. And so they're still... They're yeah. still through this letter, they're still pursuing her parents and family for the rest of the money that to burn her daughter. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Well, these are the type of things I've got. That's... Yeah. I mean, how do you come across those things? How did you get the the book, for instance? Because that bound to be quite valuable. I mean, if there's only three that's ever been made. Well, the thing is, the thing is, I'm I'm on to. I mean, every day I'm going through American auctions, Australian auctions auctions in Europe and if something Scottish turns up uh, paperwork uh, they'll let me know 
the thing is, um, they'll have a date of when of when the the the, the manuscript was uh, written, but nobody can be arsed actually reading, spending their time to try and decipher what the manuscript's about. Mm -hmm. So I'll get a look at it, and if I because I'm I'm like a witch historian here. Um, yeah. I, I have I have <laughs> I have I have books that identify at least three hundred witches that aren't, aren't even on record. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I have. I've got books going back to the the, the 16, 1500s, hundreds uh, on witch trials. Um, I'm quite gifted in what I've got, but um, the 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 what was I gibbering about? Uh, yes, yes. What was I talking about? Your museum. Off track there. Your museum. Ah, my museum piece. Your museum. This, 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 this yeah, um, yeah. the whole thing about the whole thing about these manuscripts. Sorry, these manuscripts is is um, I I identify. I can I can read uh, quite a lot of these old manuscripts. Uh, spend a lot of time in them, and if I can identify the manuscript with with um, uh, a period in Scotland, I'll, I'll buy it and examine mm -hmm. it more. And sometimes I get lucky, and this is where I get my manuscripts. Certainly, my Catherine Campbell letter um, to anybody—it's mm -hmm. it's just a debtor's letter. But when I saw the name and I saw the date and saw what it was from, I knew who exactly this person was. Um, I recently, uh, what have uh, John Skeen? Uh, I recently got a letter, a manuscript from America, uh, American markets. Uh, John Skeen, who um, mm -hmm. was. Our head, head of the church during the the Berwick witches, and this guy oversaw oversaw with the the king, King James the Sixth, the Berwick witches, and uh, so I have I have a letter with his signature on it. So with with his signature comes a story of the man, and 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 this is the sort of stuff I have. So it'll be a storyboard heavy um, museum with about thirty articles, um, but I need funding. That's the thing. These things cost money, yeah. lots of money. Yeah. And well, if, you're uh, like, if there's any millionaires out there, oh please, contact Leonard. Yeah, here I that. am. Um, wanna, I'm, I'm about to open up a, a, a witch museum, and I've got the backing of the councils here. So, and they're throwing some money at me, but I need lots more. Uh, and it'll be first so, of its kind. It'll be a witch trial, a Scottish witch trial museum. Uh, that'll be that. interesting. I'll have a few that pieces would. from Salem. <laughs> You'll need you'll need to tell us when you open that because I would like to come in. Do you have a bit of video? Well, it should, so if, thing, if I get the funding and I, and I, and I get a bit lucky, it should be running by April. No, oh, that'll be good. So we've got about ten minutes left of the show, and we know you're really tired. But I've actually got a question for you, Leonard. How did you get into this? How how did this all start with you? Oh Christ! Um, I was twenty. I was twenty five. I was 25 years old and um, I had a sister who was 36 and she had mm. complete kidney failure. And so and she was a Ooh. nurse as well. So she knew what was happening to her. And it was a slow drawn process and she was dying. So um, I came yeah. home from London to see her in the hospital. She'd refused treatment. She had enough. Uh, she had glaucoma. Yeah. She was bald. She had yellow. Oh God, she was, she was just having a terrible time of it on dialysis. Yeah. There was no saving her. So she decided enough's yeah. enough, and she, she she refused treatment, and eventually she 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 she, she went. But anyway, um, me, me and my sister were very close. Uh, she was she was a a, a great soul. Um, she loved her music. She loved Peter Gabriel, and and, uh, mm -hmm. and and she was a she was your original hippie. You know, she was she was a good. She went to Glastonbury and danced naked in the mud. Yeah. This is the type of sister mm -hmm. she was. She was the one yeah. that. When I when I got my first motorbike, um, I used to go to the I used to go to the local park and uh, you use the lights to help her find mushrooms. This type of thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so, let's go out. yeah, she was she was a, she was a total hippie, um, but she mm. she um she passed and that was it. So um, yeah, I, I was it was I was we we got a house in, in Largo in five here that was built in seventeen seventy yeah. six. It's a kind of uh, it's a date that a few Americans might remember. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, seventeen seventy six mm. revolution in the air. Yeah, colonial mm -hmm. chaps. Yeah, naughty boys. But anyway, um, the the um, that's when that's when the house that's when the house was built, and um, the 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 uh, so it's an old an old you know 
five bedroom house with a cellar. Um, that cellar should have yeah. been a horror film. God, that was. Woo-hoo. But anyway, uh, uh, the, 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 the thing was, um, I'd gone to bed and it was uh, her, my sister's funeral was the next day, you see. And I'd gone oh. to bed and I'd set out all my clothes. And to, to be honest with you, we were glad it was over. That sounds horrible. We were glad she'd finally mm-hmm. gone mm-hmm. because I don't even. We'd, we'd, we'd seen two yeah. weeks of hell, uh, slowly getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And going, hopefully it's today, today, and it would be the next day. And, and, and we just sort of get, oh, just get pathetically yeah. worse. Um, yeah. But anyway, so we're all kind of prepared and happy. That, you know, I've got I've got four brothers, four other brothers and sisters. And it was my mum. So uh, I went to bed and I was everything set up for the funeral the next day. And um, it, it, it came, you know, I always read before I go to bed. So I read. I hadn't been drinking or anything. It was about one mm. o'clock in the morning. I put the light off, went to sleep. And I got this this waft of a freezing cold breeze just came over me. Uh, and I went, what yeah. was that? You know, I know, my, I, know, I know our house and you don't get breezes in our house. And uh, I sat up and I, I heard, it's me, it's your Lorna. And, I, and I, I, I sat up and I looked. And at the bottom of my bed was my sister sitting on my bed. No, I could see my sister in the mm-hmm. mirror. She was there. Just sitting, she was sitting, grinning, and she's in a white gown, yeah. just grinning at me. And you know what I did? I turned round, I bit my cushion and screamed. I bit my cushion. <laughs> I, 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 I felt like, afterwards, I felt, what a fool. But I was, I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. There's my dead sister sitting there, talking to me on the edge of my bed, and and she, I looked at her, and she looked like frightened, and she just stood up yeah. and faded away. That was it. I got up, oh. I walked the house, I walked the house, uh, I went for the whiskey bottle, and I went out the house, and uh, we got we got a, a a big um, kind of not a mountain, but it's a big, big hill behind us, a thousand feet high, mm-hmm. and uh, and I, I I climbed this hill and I sat at the top with this bottle of whiskey and I watched the sun come up. And uh, yeah. I was a mess. I was I was a total mess. But you know, it was my sister. God's sakes! And my sister, I'm yeah, not afraid of my sure. sister. She was she was a best friend to me. But I behaved terribly. Um, I, I you know I've, I've seen I've seen ghosts now a few times close up, and um, yeah, I've I've never I've never reacted like that again. But I, I felt embarrassed if, you, if if that makes any sense to you. Yeah, I, I saw, saw, I I saw a dead person yeah. I recognised, and I, and I, and I, I I I was I was terrified. I, yeah, that was my first. Yeah. Um, but it, you never know; it might happen again. You might go to your bed one night, and your sister might appear before you again. And this time, you'll you'll no freak out. You'll have a conversation with. Well, I did last year. It was um, of a very interesting. How much time have we got? Five minutes. I'll try and be quick. Um, five minutes. I went to Largo Cemetery. Um, somebody came to me at one of my, my lectures and said, have you ever, you ever investigated Largo Cemetery? And I went, I've, I've no need to. No, mm. Nothing goes on there. My sister's buried there. So um, she said, well, I was in the cemetery and I was I was dealing with a, a, somebody that was dead and uh, a figure walked out from behind a grave and uh, I watched this figure uh, he looked like a labourer with you know string tied round his trousers, and in with a black cap on. And I said, I watched him walk through a wall and then walk down through this field, and he just disappeared. And I went, wow. So I did, I did my research and asked, and uh, someone else came up with uh, the same figure. Uh, they were they were about a mile mm-hmm. distance on the same track, and they said this man appeared out of nowhere, walked right past them, you know, six seven o'clock at night. Uh, they described him exactly the same, and he vanished. And I went, the, the, well, the track they're on is called the Coffin Walk, and it used to it used to be a walkway Ooh. from the the local barons of of London, uh, L U N D I N London London Castle, which uh, this mm-hmm. walk would take you. They call it the Coffin Walk. Would take you up to the cemetery. So anyway, um, okay, I've got something interesting to investigate. So we we went and to the cemetery and set up. And um, we're just nothing was happening, 
uh, and then I got mm. I got the heat seeking camera on, and I picked up a figure figure standing next to a gravestone, a, a little man. So anyway, uh, we're mm -hmm. doing recordings, and uh, through the recordings, I have a load of a load of a load of foreign blethers come through to me. Uh, I went, this mm -hmm. is weird. Mm -hmm. uh, I got identified as Polish. Now, the Polish regiments were in Largo during the Second World War. This got me interested. Yeah. Those poor buggers that went to Arnhem and got shot to pieces. That's um, right. One of the one of the, the one of the names that came, it's asked asked this thing its name and it, it said Radinsky Radinsky. Uh, so I did my research yeah. and I found out fair enough that there is one Radinsky in the cemetery, but they couldn't tell me where. And uh, so we went we went back with um, a Polish speaking girl and we we got her to translate as we we spoke to tried to speak to this Radinsky. Hmm. He replied. And when he when he when he replied on the first uh, recordings that we did, the Polish girl I was with ran away. She was having she was she thought it was a great laugh to start with, but when she actually heard this Polish guy's voice, she <laughs> laughed. and because uh, he he was he was being naughty to her, he was saying rude things to her. So mm. she she thought she thought this was all a laugh, and then all of a sudden this is real. Anyway, we uh, we went back there a couple of times. And now let's see if we can find Radinsky. We, we know there's one buried in this graveyard. Was he not sitting? Was his grave not two graves behind where we were sitting for the recordings? There's a guy, Radinsky, and he That's died amazing. in 73. And uh, Christ Almighty, you know, um, it's great getting evidence of, of you know, yeah. there's a lot of lot of hauntings I've go to where you don't get any names at all. You maybe get you maybe get something calling itself John, but you'll never get a second name. We got we got the whole thing, and there he is with a grave mm. three three up from us. Um, and I, I say Radinsky, Polish speaking. I can't even do it, but it, it's it's not pronounced <laughs> like it's not pronounced like that. It's like Radinsky. I can't say it. Radinsky or something. Yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, I, can't do it. I can't do it. But I've got Polish friends that uh, laugh at me trying to pronounce that name. But uh, so we 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 got we got we got, we got uh, um, a photographic evidence. We got uh, recording evidence, and then we got actual evidence. The guy existed and was living. Well, his grave was three 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 behind us where we were sitting. So that was fascinating. See, for that's us. amazing. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. I just, yeah. I, I just shows you there's. I do think I don't know what it is with the spirit world and stuff like that, but I do think things are planned out for our yeah. lives because it's weird. I've had too many weird things happen, too many coincidences. Uh -huh. You've maybe been talking to somebody in the spirit and they've given you a name, and then you've walked in a wee bit and you found their grave. It's like yeah. as if it's already planned, if you know. But I would like to say, Leonard, thank. Thank you very much for coming on tonight, and we'll need to get you back again sometime. When you're it's, not it's no tired. problem. The time has yeah. flown, and I'm I'm not as tired as I thought I was. Um, <laughs> I've got I've got my partner behind me here. She's she's laughing, but uh, what she what she doesn't know is if if I die before her, she's getting right haunted. <laughs> 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 well, you'll need to come and haunt my pal Dakota first, you know. You've got to there, you know? I literally have cameras in the bedroom. So Dakota, <laughs> I'm not going anywhere near your bedroom, pal. Oh. Probably for the best. <laughs> oh, so Dakota, do you have anything to say before tomorrow's show? No. Do we have plans? No, I have to say, this was definitely a very fascinating episode. I'm going to have to get some of your books and read up first. Please do. Please do. They're, they're available from yeah. Barnes and Noble in your country. And um, I'm with a new yeah. publisher just now. I've got, th I've got three books with a new publisher. They're all to do with witches. And um, I've, I've got one, the, 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 load, the, the Scotland's Untold Stories, which is which has got um, about 30 tales in Scotland. That will open your eyes up. Uh, some good ones in yeah. there. But I'm all about history. So uh, not the boring stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's certainly not. Um, we'll, we'll need we'll need to get you back sometime, but we're going to let you go now, and we're going to say to everybody in the chat, thank you everybody for coming. Thanks, Join thanks us for having me. And, um, it's been a pleasure. Yes, it has been, yep. and thank you very much, Leonard. And we'll catch everybody later. See you soon. Bye bye.
Well, you that's terrible, by the way. <laughs> you son of a. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting like a, a nuclear operator, and now we're getting bunker ready to press the button. You know, God. oh, Pete, Pete. Honestly, Pete, I think I, I was just saying to Dakota we should do the YMCA, right? I'll dress up. Dakota will dress up. Pete, you need to join us. You need to dress up. Uh, Dots, you should dress up to YMCA. I could see you now, now Pete. Uh, I could uh, see the new standing uh, in the farm dressed as that. That's why I've been single for so Indian. long. Well, Pete. Hey, if that's what you're into, Chris, you know, just live your life. There's man. nothing wrong Come with. On. I'll tell you something. There's, there's nothing wrong with that kind of lifestyle. If that's how you want to be, then just be it. You know, it's the 2020s. There's Emerald Dale's paranormal in this room. You should see what they've got planned for this week. Come in, guys. Go out and check their channel out. And um, they're going to be doing Leap Castle and all around. So remember, go and check out Emerald Isles Paranormal. There you go. Uh, put my name back to where it was. See? Oh, I, I didn't do what? anything. What are you talking about? Young man. I can see you. Hey, Jenny was saying, Jenny says I look like Elton John. You know, I think... Jenny's hey, fucking noticed, blind as a bat. I just... I, I, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something new. Dots was saying that I look like Simple Jack, you know. Simple Jack, I can see. It's Elton John. No, what I was saying, what no, what I was saying is right. I was talking about my beard, right? Yes, I've got a beard. Everybody in the fucking village seems to look notice I've got a beard. Not that I've got anything else to talk about, but I've got a beard. But anyway, um, I was talking about is it the handlebar one, and that's what brought on the the YMCA. I don't know yeah, how man. The fuck I can we got see that, you but, there. Hey. I said, young man. If that's what you're into, you Chris, it's you, perfectly man. okay. I can see you there. Embrace Come on, everybody. You are, man. Y-M-C-A. Come on. At the YMC. Wow. Hey, Lawrence. I-, I think I look lovely with this one. My head looks like it's rather big, though. Can't I mean? 100% yeah, you nylon, like you got a mm. I look- Jenny, actually, if you're in the room, Jenny spied a spiritual encounter the other night on uh, the paranormal uncut. She's seen Nobby. Where did it go? The fuck? Just what happened? happened here? It ha- that's the second time it's happened now. It's then. It's the end. It's the apocalypse. Everybody, the YMCA. Of course, now, you would want to go out and sing in the YMCA. Why not? Why not? If the, if the world's, if the world's going to hey, end, I know, in a hey, I know, version, you know? Hey, I know you're all worried about the world's going to end, civil war in the U.S. Uh, the world's going to end. Want, you want to go out having a good time. That's okay. Uh, honestly, I'll tell you something there. Simple Jack. How is it? My, 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 I'm simple, 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 simple Jack. Well. I watched much of the Tropic have to Thunder try to last do the voice. You already sound like money your day to day. I don't sound anything like Simple Jack. I'll have yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, Jenny. Yum, yum. It's Nobby. Everybody, show Nobby. Show Nobby. Can, can you bring Nobby up? Actually, I already have the uh, photo I sent you when that glitch happened. Yeah, I was to show everybody up. else. <gasps> Jenny, avert your eyes. Control your urges. It's I think when Dakota was designing the background, I think he was doing something in the shadows. That's all I'm going to say. There's an awful lot of hair at the tip. I know. I know. It's a. It's not. Uh, a I mean, God. I think I need to get I a mean, Gillette God, razor on that one. You know. I was like, oh, I was like, but dear God, it must have been European, and if it got caught like that. I know. Honestly, I mean, I think, I think it's. Uh, honestly, I think it's. Um, I think I need to get still, a jet razor on there, man. Here's, a, I, no here's what I enough. want to know. How the fuck did this glitch even happen in the first place? Well, I was sitting with Louise, and Jenny was trying to get her microphone to work for some weird reason. I don't know what was wrong, right? And then all of a sudden, she came in. We could hear her for a split second, and then all of a sudden, it kicked us totally out. I logged back in, and there was nothing there. There was obviously a show for Saturday night, Ken Leonard Law, mm-hmm. and that was that. And I thought, oh, I was better, so I logged back out again, and I went and joined Jenny's live on Stream Yard. 
and it was fine. And then you sent me that picture of somebody sitting there. So Nobby was using my account. I know. It was weird. I, uh, you started blowing up my phone as I was out of town. Yeah, your phone sending you a message. It was, it was, you were blowing up my phone worse than some <clears throat> women I know, man. God. I mean, you've got extraterrestrial women out there, you know. Yeah, maybe I got women on and off. Work. That's maybe why it's got here. It's too close to the radiation in the spaceships. They tended to go Brazilian, but... Well, you, I think you're. I don't know. I just came in to try to figure out what the fuck was going on. But by, by the way, which YouTube channel were you saying the video got taken down? I went to Go Squad Scotland, and it came up with a black screen, and it said in big white letters, "The owner of this video has removed it." Zero one nine six six five six five on a dash. Owner and then went back in again. It was gone. That's fucking weird. Because that's why I was deeking around on your account when I got in. Because I was trying mm -hmm. to figure out what the fuck happened. When I was talking to Jenny before the live, I had a quick look through my account too on the old day iPhone. Cause, cause, and I hey, couldn't... Yeah, know why you would it think was... Jenny would realize that it was something suspicious when the person that was trolling you could actually spell. <laughs> but see, but here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. I wonder what that was, but who? But, but the question was, even if I had to leave, like I'm about to the new, right? Like, say for instance, I had to turn my camera off, right? Say I turned my camera off the new, it would come up with this icon in the middle, right? If I was still connected, Aye. okay. So, so I wasn't there, so it was like I was there. So where? What the in God's name? Where was I? That that's a very good question because. I honestly came in. I was trying to figure out what the hell was going on. I saw your name pop up. I was like, all right. Maybe he came mm -hmm. in, tried to tell me what was going on, figured that out. Then I got to bring you up. I hit click on show on screen, and it just brings up the little text box. It's like, that is yeah. fucking it weird. It shouldn't have did that. It shouldn't have did that. Because if, I, if my camera wasn't working... This is what you should have got. That's right what I'm doing right now. I'm telling you, there's the ghosts in the machine. And what is it? Mike, the naked Bigfoot, would talk about that. Ghosts in the machine. Oh, Dakota's been took, ladies and gentlemen. He's, 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 everybody has said uh, Dakota froze for you guys because he's. <gasps> no! He's been took! No be gum! Jenny! No be gum. He's been took. The fan, the fan. I was going to say the fan. Can I join the night, guys? What's going on? See what I mean, guys. We're having nothing but problems this weather. That was weird. No be got you. That no be. Oh, am I going to have to start making T-shirts with that? I think you should. I think you should. Uh, what, what, oh, Christ, there's Drew and Christ. What pish are we talk, going to be talking about tonight? We're talking about you, Drew, the night. We're talking about how an annoying pain in the ass you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, you definitely can't tell you two are brothers. Uh, well, listen, I had to share a room with him for many years, and it was, I'll tell you something, the new Drew, I shared it with a, a, a rage invested uh, orangutan or something like that, you know? It's got to blow my nose. You're good to do what to an orangutan? You know that's how STDs got started, right? The fairly certain STDs got started because of people trying to do whatever you're talking about to orangutans. God, and that's why he's got to blow, blow real hard. What was that? What was that woman in Johnny Depp, the one in the court? Was she turning up the hangman? Kid known she was Amber Heard. Yeah. Amber yeah. Heard die. Yeah, she was definitely sneaking something. Right? <laughs> she was sneaking something. She was. And a woman of her mental was. capacity should not be messing around with heavy narcotics. But I did, I mean, it, made, it made you wonder how something like that would begin. Obviously, the monkeys in the jungle and stuff and the gorillas and stuff. Like that. Did you see that? That's actually quite interesting you bring that up. Did you see that article about them, how they've, see, they've witnessed the, the monkeys in the, the jungle starting to use tools? 
Monkeys have been using tools for quite some time. I bet the no, but what I'm trying to say is they've yeah, they've, they've they witnessed basically it's, the basically they fully believe that chimpanzees have started to enter their own version of the Stone Age. Yeah. So give them a they even started showing religious years. behavior. See, that's quite interesting that because we can how intelligent they it's are. Like, Oh, yeah, they are very intelligent animals. I mean, orangutans, they're some of the hardest animals to keep in the zoo because they keep figuring out how to escape. See, that's you ever, you ever been to one of the um, drive through zoos? Once, yeah. You ever notice that something goes missing from every car? Yeah. As you drive through it? I think they're actually secretly somewhere taking all that stuff back and building their own cars so they can escape. It wouldn't be surprising. I'm sorry, guys. I've just I've went mad tonight. Also, I'm just in the chat there. Scottish Outlooker. Two wee monkeys have escaped the zoo here in Scotland. It was on the news earlier. And Scotland. Oh. Can you imagine what's going to happen to them when they make it to Glasgow? And they make it to the, the Gorbals? Oh. Yeah, those poor monkeys are going to get molested. It's... I don't think they will really notice it, but it'll be, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be like, uh, what do you call it? It'll be like, what's that film with the, uh, the, the dinosaurs and it's an island? Which maybe it's an old one. Dad, what do you call it? Jurassic Park. I was about to say Jurassic Park. I'm, I'm getting dementia, guys. I'm getting dementia. A safari yeah, park. Right? What's that? All the time, the gorilla knew the sign language. That's exactly. Ah, that's right, Emerald Isles. That's true about the sign language. That's amazing, yeah, Coco. That? And then there was also that, uh, what was it? Was it an orangutan that was in the film Any Which Way But Loose with Clint Eastwood? I believe it was. Yeah, it was an orangutan because it was quite intelligent. They are. Mm. They're actually well known so, for uh, sneaking keys away from zookeepers in order to let themselves out of their enclosures. See, that's like that's like Elon Musk. I mean, it was a paranormal and UFO show and that, but getting into the monkeys here, you know. But Elon Musk wants to, what is it, implant a chip in one of them, didn't it? So he already did. Computers. Aye, but I know he did, but what I'm trying to say is, is that can he, I mean, that's that's how, that's how fucking, would you call it, that's how the Planet of the Apes all started and all that yeah. kind of shit, man. Yeah, no, Planet of the Apes, he already had, yeah, he was testing Neuralink in a bunch of macaws, and one of them actually had some severe reactions. Had to be put down. That's terrible. Can you, I, can, I can see how it's, it's a good going thing into in a violent way. convulsions. It was having brain swelling. See, that's I. See, well, I'm going to say here, right? It might sound bad, right? See, if you're paralyzed, right, and you can't move, and you've got a brain implant where you can maybe speak through computers and stuff like that, and maybe use like a like I don't know a wheelchair that's electric or something. That's a good idea, but. What's going to end up happening is everybody's going to end up getting this. So as they can interlink their minds and something stupid like that. You can sit in a car and drive a car just by sitting there. Get what I mean? It's <clears throat> going to start looking like the humans out of Wally. What? I see that. that Everything was so automated for so long. They just kept getting fat and their bone structures. They would not even be able to walk because they've been so lazy. Their bones are completely disconnected. Not be able to support that... anything. So I'm just reading, uh, oh God, Jenny Emerald Isles, paranormal researchers. What, I'm is she cranky when her blood sugar goes low? I don't know what she's reading. I'm trying to read it up the top. I have not ate yet. You need to get You need to get yourself something to nibble. You need get to have something. something to nibble. What? Yeah. Planet of the Apes. There's, what's that? Planet of the Dale. Apes. In the future, we will not spank the monkey at the monkey. <laughs> Those are called furries, Pete. Pete. Pete's got a terrible mind. Pete, you need to get your, say, your own X-rated YouTube channel. What's that that uh, uh, Jenny said there? Oh, thank the you, Rosa. Animals have a lot more intelligence than humans. Crows and jackdaws, rats, eat. the intelligence is... But I, that's very true. That is very true. Isn't it? Yeah, very true. You ever see you ever seen a raven? I can somebody that trained a raven, and it was it, they can speak. They they can they yeah. can actually speak. Crows can like speak too. Yeah, they can parrot. 
yeah, why do you think everybody was freaking out a couple years back when there was that crow that was saying the hanged man's coming? But think about so, it. Ravens, Norse mythology. <laughs> you know, you're talking about Odin. We got Ragnarok on the way. Man, the world is messed up. The world is totally, absolutely, completely. Yeah, no, you were going on up. saying that the U.S. <clears throat> is going to go into civil war. Because I wasn't. I, I wasn't saying it was going into civil war. I was asking. Yeah, you fucking opinion. word, don't you? Lie I was me. asking. I was asking your opinion because it is getting quite serious now because they are it's... moving with military equipment and stuff, which is interesting. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. All the states that are siding with Texas are the ones that are <clears throat> gone. They're the ones. <clears throat> I, here, here in Idaho is one of the ones siding with Texas. Of course, we always try to follow fucking Texas for some godly reason. But yeah, all the states that are siding with <clears> Texas <throat> to try to stop this immigration situation. Don't you worry. Texas, if, they're the if ones that prefer war, to use their guns. If there's a civil war, you could get a job as the drummer boy. <laughs> no, like we discussed, because of my medical history, I would have to be the one but the stand behind with all the housewives. So, ladies, so ah, gentlemen that's watching this that might get called up that live in uh, Idaho State, you know that this young man here will be let loose with your wife. <laughs> Don't worry, he's ready to go. Be, space, you know, be fine, you know. You know, the Galactic Federation ready getting out of a divorce film, you know, all that kind of So, Dakota, what's, what's the latest on the, the UFO news? I, I, I've not been watching it much yet, but what is and disclosure and stuff like because I've not heard anything about it. Well, the latest bit of news <clears throat> is the stuff coming out of Yuri Geller. Oh, God, I see that. I know, for fuck's sake. I was like, wasn't he debunked years ago that he was falsifying right. his psychic shit? Why are we trusting him now? I'm going to say that's right. See that bend in the spoons, right? Uh, there's Drew in the chat. But anyway, see, see in the, what you call it, bend in the spoons, right? That's actually been proven how to do that. You ever, you ever seen that as the amazing Randy? You know what I'm talking about? James Randy, yeah. James He's Randy, the one that right. debunked him. You want, I, you want to watch that, guys. There's old clips of it. this old guy. He's dead now, but he was an amazing yeah. guy, and he used to debunk folk like psychics and all that kind of other kind of stuff. And he debunked how he was doing it with the spoons, right? Yeah, he I also mean, debunked I, I, how he was trying to... He, you know, like he would have someone draw pictures on a piece of paper and he would try to copy what it was. Nobody ever thought to pay attention to the fact that he always have people draw in wide circles. And yes, yes, people know how the hell he did it, Drew. He's been debunked for years. So why the fuck are we listening to what he's saying about the ETs right now? I right, look, I seen him, I seen him on TikTok, right? And he was talking about a UFO. But it's it was it was a CGI UFO. It was you could clearly see it was a CGI UFO. I mean, it was really mm -hmm. bad CGI UFO that you could tell was used like really really oh. cheap nineties CGI equipment. And I just don't know, honestly. I mean, granted, yes, he did know a lot of people. He did know Warner Von Braun, and maybe they showed him shit. Nevertheless, no, maybe they did. But if that's the case, then the U.S. government has always been full of fucking jokes. I've had tales about folks' watches and stuff walk, working again and all that kind of stuff. Maybe it's true, maybe it's no. But look, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a performer, right? And mm -hmm. I, I honestly, I don't believe the guy. I think he's a fake I think he's 100% you know, fake. And if he's telling the truth, because you know it's skinny Bob footage, right? I've heard about it. I've not seen that. Yeah, it's just a little that. alien that, you know, is kind of interacting. You see a bunch of people off mm -hmm. screen you know, kind of doing measurements. He's saying that he's seen beings like that, several of them. But, well, not exactly like it, but ones who were recovered in crashes and they were pretty well destroyed. What we'll have to look at here is with Yuri Gagela is, is the same. He's, he, I I know he's famous, right? But I think he's a bit of an idiot. And that's it's, it's true what uh, Pete says there. He's full of shit. He is. And the, the reason I say that is because you get the fakers and the paranormal that fake the paranormal, the fake the ghost stuff, right? And, and there's people out there that don't think that there is fakers in the UFO community. But there is. 
there's a lot of fakers in the UFO community. And I can't believe the amount of idiots out there that are falling for this CGI shit. Mm -hmm. And not even good shit. I know. I mean, I've seen some really good stuff. I've seen I mean, some, I've really seen some good better CGI, CGI out of most of these videos out of 90s mm -hmm. movies. Aye. Well, early 2000s but, Pixar. Aye. But it's there's people falling. There's people falling. I seen one another night in TikTok and it was a ghost walking through a wall. It was the most terrible one I've ever seen in my entire life. And then I seen a UFO one and I don't know. This is what gives the paranormal a bad name is fakers. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it takes the slightest thing like throwing a stone or doing anything in the paranormal again to fake it. It's, it's mm -hmm. a joke. Because people, like we've talked about before, people want to believe yeah. in the fantastical. You know, there's this Dungeons and Dragons mentality that just because they believe something to be real it just means it is. No, that, that fucks everything up that we're trying to do. They're trying to figure out what the hell's actually happening. Yeah. People, I have met people and they think that the paranormal's fully like, I, I, fairies and goblins and all these things, like you say, Dungeons and Dragons, and they think it's like a mystical thing and all that kind of stuff. We don't really know what's out there, right? Fairies and goblins, I they probably do exist, right? I mean, if you listen to like Mike's stuff and all that, how he talks about the little people and stuff like that, right? And the, mm -hmm. but you need to be very careful if you're watching this. Then you need to be very careful. You don't go looking for these things because some of these things are not as nice as you they're made out to be. Mm -hmm. What's what was that one that Mike had to get rid of and it was in the house? It reminds me did a video on it. It was one of the first videos he did, Pete. What was that? It was a it used mirrors to travel. It was the god was it the goblin that? house? Was it the goblin house, Pete? Um I forgot man. Um it'll be taking away. I know which one you're talking about. <clears throat> and there are several Aye. beings that are known to use mirrors. Yeah, it'll tell us in a minute. But see things like that, people will think, oh, that's so mystical. I want to go and try and contact one of them. No, don't. A lot of bullshit. What's that? Which is to bless one who be. <laughs> Good one, Pete. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, the, there's a lot of shit. There's a lot of fake stuff out there. And... But I'm going to say this, there's a lot of good ghost hunting teams out there and there's a lot of good uh, UFO people out there. But it's always them that don't get the views. It's always the folk that fake stuff. I know, which always blows my mind because a lot of those people, the genuine ones, if you actually look carefully, the stuff that they're doing, the stuff they put out, actually has the most backing to support this stuff is real. I'm not saying this yeah. stuff isn't real. And you know, we can bounce it back to Gary Geller. Maybe he's telling the truth that he actually got to see those things. You have friends enough of in high places, they'll be more than happy to show you That's the shit. That's that. Fetches. Thank you, I knew it. Thank you, Pete. Damn, I remember that. They were fetches. I have scars on my arms and back from that one. Aye. Yeah. Uh, you get nasty. I watched your dad's I watched your dad's video on that, and then one night I was sitting talking to him on Twitter. And he was telling us all about it. He tell us stuff that obviously didn't they talk about. And that that was terrifying to think that there were things lurking about in the darkness. Because you also got to be careful about how much you actually put out of the genuine stuff because people can psych themselves out to the point. Either you have a psychosomatic effect to where they're essentially manifesting, for lack of a better word, these anomalies, or some beings... Are that much of an asshole to realize yeah. <laughs> this person's easy prey. Yeah. As soon as they realize if you're an easy subject or no, if they, as soon as they realize that they can latch onto you and you take you somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I mean, a fetch, I don't, how, you, obviously you have to use like trap a fetch and a mother, didn't you? Yeah. To get rid of it, right? So it makes you wonder. So just think of it in this sense. Imagine going to an antique shop. And they, oh, look at that lovely mirror they are hanging up. I think I'll take that home to my house. And then all hell breaks loose. <laughs> it, 
it's it's a very scary thing, guys, and you need to be very, very careful what's out there. I've been always go out there. <clears throat> if you like go hand shop and have their employees freak out about something, it's like I'll take it off your hands. <laughs> I, I I would say that go to reputable YouTube channels. Don't go to see the, the big YouTube channels out there. That are, they, every every single show of the day, there's a ghost or there's a cup floating in front of somebody and all that. It's it's fake, right? We can that. I'm not saying that there isn't a poltergeist activity and stuff like that, but you want to go to reputable ones. See, yeah. Uh, Emerald Dial's Paranormal's actually going away this week coming to back to Wheat Castle. What you want to go yeah, there, didn't you? Saying you? That. And uh, Redwood Castle too, I think. So remember and check them out, guys. But you want to see places like that. I mean, Leap Castle, can you imagine being in there, Dakota? Can you imagine how exciting that is? That would be interesting. Yeah. What's that? One's dad named them, they got violent towards us. See, that's Mm-hmm. Pete, we need you to come on the show one night, man. We need you to come on. Well. If you want, if you want, to, I can give you Dakotas. You know, as a you can come and work in your farm for free for a couple of months or something like that. You know, to pay it off to come on. You know, the fuck you soliciting me for? <laughs> oh, I'm soliciting you. You'd be, you'd You're you'd soliciting be me. To see the big foot. You'd be wanting to see the big I, foot anyway. They might I, come and visit you in the night when you're in your bed or something. I've already like, dealt know? with Bigfoot. I'm fine. I, I actually go out and have, have to go check out this shit. Just because I'm not posting every five fucking seconds of what I'm doing. Yeah. God, some of these people are so attention deprived, they're willing to post the, the fact that they took a shit just to get views. <laughs> Alright, look. I am going to say this. YouTube is dying. Like, see see YouTube. It's it's not as good. Everything's police now. And this is where we jump on the UFO subject now. Oh, and the oh, conspiracy oh. subject. How oh, everything oh, is oh. just Oh, YouTube. Oh, I got a bone to pick with YouTube now. Oh, why? Why is that? Okay, going back to the Nobby incident, as you know, <gasps> so eloquently Jenny, called Nobby. it. No. Hey, if Jenny's that lonely, you know, there, there's apps for that. But so the main reason why I was asking what YouTube channel, focus, damn you. We were, you were telling me that uh, the, video that you tried to do with Jenny got taken down. Uh, yeah. That's why I was wanting to look around. Apparently, at the same time that you had all that go down, one of our backup channels had a community guideline strike. Yeah. And to where we can't go out live on it, I can't post to it for about a week. A little under a week now. And I'm just like... And it was because... What I did is YouTube added this little feature to where you can use RSS feeds to connect podcasts to it now. So being that it's one of our backup channels, I used it to help back up our audio. A video we got, we had talking about the GB jab, as you call it, no, 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 no. was the one got that got flagged for medical misinformation, even though they're trying to say, oh, according to the World Health Organization, that all these the vaccines are safe. Tell me, how many investigations are open now because of the number of heart-related incidents ever since the vaccines got rolled out? I know. That's it's official investigations. Why the fuck you harassing us? And why is it they're only tackling the lesser known of the channels? That's the part that doesn't make sense to me. If you did... You wanted to start her targeting people, you would target if they have multiple channels, the one that where the most views gets. Yep. But I don't know why they did it. That's quite interesting what Emerald Dale says there. Um about I'll bring it up. We hear it great exp- experiences from great locations, Leap Castle and must go. We can show and let you listen, but you go to experience it mm-hmm. and be there exactly. We need we need their bald and bonkers live for Leap Castle for the dungeons. Yeah, was that we actually was get that a decent signal from the dungeon? I think you, uh, Jenny, can you get a good signal for Leap Castle? Is a is there a decent signal for that location? I mean, I would love to go there. I would love to go to Leap Castle. I know the five G yeah. is supposed to be deep ground penetrating, but. And they are sleepwalking us into World War III. Football Factory, and they are sleepwalking us into World War Three. 
I, I know the world's <laughs> went mad. What's that fade? Yeah, okay, World War Three best of the issue. A lot of people assume that World War Three is going to be a lot like the first two world wars, where it's guns and bombs and knives. No, several intelligence operators have come out saying that World War Three is not fought by proxy wars. Countries getting involved in conflicts of other regions. What exactly has the United States been doing? Ukraine, Israel with Hamas. World War Three is already here. No one wants to just submit it. Yeah. I think World War Three has been here for a long time. The use of nuclear weapons, I don't think they're mad enough. Plus, I no. think they've all been turned over. Because if you're just set, supporting but... other nations <clears throat> in their conflicts, that's just something that allied countries do. Then yeah. you won't have the people freaking out about their significant others going to war. It was quite interesting. Oh, I, was that's watching over a, there. I was watching an interesting program the other night. It was today with the Russians and the Americans. And the guy was the guy was sitting doing with the, the, the Russian ambassador, right? Mm -hmm. In America. And he says to me, he says, Do you think, do you think, honestly think that there'll be like a third world war and he says he says look in this russian lingo he went look it's not going to be us that that causes it he says it's going to be yours that cause it he says we're not going to make the first step yours are going to do something and i can guarantee you we will not press any buttons but that's the, see that's the thing you came at putin's light came at, look what he did came, i mean you who do you believe that's the thing that's the whole point the, the Russians, Russians had their own the propaganda Russians. against Americans. Yeah. Americans had the propaganda against the Russians. We're fighting. We're being. It's like nobody has actually gotten out of this goddamn high school clique mentality and needs to grow the fuck up. I, I'm going to say to you, I'm going to say to you that America and Britain and all that, we are living in a new kind of era. Right, well, let's face it, we're living in a new era about the technology mm -hmm. and stuff like that. We are needing to be made accepting. We are needing to be made accepting for what's happening in other parts of the world. So we're needing to end all these wars. We're needing to help these countries that were bombed the, the fuck out of it, basically. I'm sorry about my swearing, guys, but they have. I mean, we just need to look at the West Bank with Israel, right? We just need to look what's going on there. Yes, what happened there was well, well all that was bad, but Come on, they're ki they're killing families and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They're leveling it. There's and I'm going to say this to you. See the West Bank. There's more of that than meets the eye. Did you see? Did you hear the news about the the new canal that we're putting? Oh, what's that? Right. See how you've got the canal done. Is it the Suez Canal? It's called. I believe so. Right. Well, what they're wanting to do is, is there's actually plans and go in to Google and look this up, guys. Where the right? See, you've got the West Bank. You've got Jerusalem. Where the Palestinians are the new, they're wanting to cut right through there so they can put a, their own shipping lane in. Now, mm -hmm. the Suez Canal up there can only take one ship at a time, like one ship, then another ship, and then another ship. They can't have them passing. Well, this new canal can take like four ships at a time. So it's like two going down and two coming past. So can you imagine how that would open up transportation? Just Google it. Trust me, Google it. And it shows you the canal cuts right through Gaza. Mm -hmm. So basically they're saying that once this war's out, Gaza will not only exist. Plus they found oil too, oh, which is interesting. funny. Why does that sound so familiar? Hmm. Rich people wanting to cause land development. All of a sudden some yep. sort of disaster turns up to eradicate the it, what's already there hmm why does that sound no. so familiar Lahaina but, he, but here's the thing to right here's the thing to I mean you would think that what happened to the Jews in World War two would have would have learned them right what would, would have learned them the mistakes they like terrible people right but now they're doing exactly what we obviously they're not like gas them in gas chambers but they're, they're killing people they're killing women and children hi there's terrorists there and they have to deal with them right but come on there's no need to kill women and children 
Hamas lost, right. no launched an attack on an innocent population in order to cause fear by targeting a culturally significant event, common terrorist motive. However, the Israeli army, they have a well-known target. They're actually well-known for using Palestinian children by shooting them in the eye as target yeah. practice. I'm going to say this, right? I'm going to say this, and I don't care if I get any trouble for it or no. That's why we back up to other different channels and stuff like that. That attack that happened that day in Israel, remember there was the, what you call it, the planes, the, the microgliders mm -hmm. that came across. Now, there was, I think they knew it was going to happen and they let it happen. I think they knew it was going to happen and they let it happen. Let's face it, it was the most secure country in the world, right? There was guard posts that were meant to be manned. We named the them. And that's never happened in the history of that country. It's then been empty at certain times. That's the thing. We could have, Everybody wants to assume that it was some grand plan. No. And maybe it was. But unfortunately, in, in the case where, say, yeah, exactly. Israel is one of the most watched countries in the world for its religious exactly. significance. It's been like that for hundreds of thousands of years. Mm -hmm. So, who's to say somebody didn't get lazy? And they've been it, uh, lazy I'm... for quite some time. Like but prisoners not... listening in regards to going out on smoke breaks. Now listen. Like a prisoner yeah. looking to escape, watching to see when the, when the low-staffed guards go out for a smoke break in order to make their escape. Yeah. This is one yeah. of those things where this but, type of attack needs planning. You can't just go swinging in guns. Exactly. Blade. But what I'm going to say is this, too. The terrorists are bad bastards, too, because they went to a, a, a nursery and killed loads of children. They burnt them alive and stuff like that. Exactly. So there's there's two stories to this. I think, I think there was a wee bit. I think there was something going on. I think Israel maybe knew about it, but I don't think the mil Israeli military knew about it. I think they were caught off guard. I think somebody deliberately did it. So I, maybe maybe in the years to come, somebody will get arrested for maybe siding with the terrorists. I don't know. But what they did to their poor children or that was it was absolutely terrible. There is a transfer process when it comes to intelligence reports. And nearly every NATO country follows a very similar procedure. Yeah. Where intelligence operatives, they may catch word that there's an attack, but it's up to their superiors to determine whether yeah. or not it's a credible threat. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this could very well be something where somebody legitimately screwed up. Yeah, screwed That's up. What it could be. Yeah, it, look, look, it's happened in the UK. Remember that 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 case where the woman or the I can't remember if it was a woman or a man. She worked for a as a MI four or MI five or MI six. So it was one of the agencies, and she had all the she, secret documents in a grief case, and mm -hmm. she turned them out and she put them in the subway in the chair and then forgot about them, and walked away, and just left them lying there. Mm -hmm. Christ knows what happened to her. Now she's probably posted in the North Pole or somewhere like that. But it's madness. But I, I just think there's merit to this. Story. I just think there's merit to this because look, look what happened in Hawaii, right? With it, all the blue roofed buildings seem to survive, whereas everything else didn't. They? And then you've got you've got the the Houthis, the Houthis are Christ, I can't even pronounce them. They're attacking the what you call it, the oil ships, the new right, which has got to push the price of oil up again. Mm -hmm. right. And then you've got America and you've got Britain, you know, it's we allies and slap dogs and stuff like that that want to that want to invade Yemen to stop this. Right? Where's this going to stop? Is it going to stop when Iran comes to the aid of Yemen and then we invade Iran? And then when we invade Iran, and then when Russia comes to the aid of Iran, we're going to invade Russia. And then vice versa with North Korea, because let's face it, North Korea is Russia's ally. And then we've got China, which is Russia's ally. It's, I'm telling you, we're, ve we're, on the, we're in the very edge. We're on the very edge. I think there's a lot of fake news out there. What's that? The news has been proven to this. Aye. Mm -hmm. Dishonest, we can't, we can't believe anything important. Exactly. We can't. 
believe why ever everything that's coming out when every you know, damn near every outlet is owned by the same people mm-hmm. three financial agencies hold stock in about 90 i think it's like 90 percent 97 percent of the world's industries yeah three agencies who's that and they all interchange with that? each other Who's that? Oh, who's that? I've got a guy in my head. He's American. He's a billionaire, and he owns a lot of the news agencies uh, in America, like CNN and all that. What was his? What was his name? Fuck. He owns a lot of the and he controls a lot of the news media narrative. Mm-hmm. And that's what's happening. That all these people that want more money, they're running the narrative. They're running what news they want to play. Exactly. I remember when the, when the war first broke out. I remember when the war first broke out in Ukraine, and there was people posting things, and this was like CNN was posting like like pictures, and you look at that, and you look at the, you look at the picture, but then if you go and research that picture, that picture is like six, seven years old, mm-hmm. and it's like it's the same with the you know the old the jibby 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 do thing you know where it's the hospital room. And they say, oh, look, it's spread, to, it's spread to Spain. And then they show you a Spanish hospital room, which is exactly the same hospital room as in France. Strangely, it's this, and it's got the exact same thing. It's got the tissue on the floor and the same box yeah. in the corner with the same... I know, but that, that's the thing. It, let's go back to that video, the Xenomorph thing I showed on, a, on the show a few yeah. year, episodes back. Even the guy who created that video, he has to come out nearly once a year because news agencies are circulating that footage without actually checking into it. Hmm. It's it, they're ha- It's either there's one or two things happening in that. Either it's deliberate in- misinformation or a bunch of fuckwads running the news. Probably both. It's probably both. I mean, I I have to laugh because in the UK we've got the, the glorious BBC News Twenty Four. And they've got a special program now called Verified, Verified yeah. News, right? And what you've got to laugh at if you do your research, ladies and gentlemen, is the woman that runs Verified was actually done for misinformation for faking news years ago. Mm-hmm. And she runs it. So it makes you wonder. Look, there's been things that the report on that's totally, totally, there was, there was a case here in Scotland. And it was a uh, Donald Trump, right? And it was the, it was the Scottish news. Oh, Donald Trump was booed when he got off the plane. He got his golf course, right? There was thousands and thousands of uh, protest uh, protesters protesting against Donald Trump, right? So it shows you it shows you like maybe four folk with flags. That's what it showed you saying Trump go home. You're not allowed here, right? But then if you go into YouTube and look up what somebody filmed on their phone. There's like maybe a thousand people saying welcome to Scotland with Donald Trump hats on. You know, like, I'm not saying that Donald Trump's a nice guy or that. It could be a raven lunatic for that. We, we need somebody, we need somebody, and uh, maybe no him, that guy, would you call it Kennedy? Would make a good president day. I would love to see what would happen if Kennedy managed to get in. But you know, that just reminds me. Let's go back to the Trump administration when he was still in office. You know, annual visits to the troops. All these different new agencies were trying to report that Trump wasn't doing it. He wasn't going to go see mm-hmm. see the troops. What's what was tradition for the president to do? Yet, a few hours later, he shows that he's arrived at the bases in the, in the Middle East. And all these news agencies were trying to turn around. They're trying to backtrack saying, oh, because all these news agencies were saying that he wasn't doing it, he just went ahead and flew. I'm sorry. There, Unless he somehow hit a major jet stream, there's no way to make that trip in a few hours on a commercial flight. Yeah. Hell no. Eh, no evidence been faked. We know what else is. Don't believe in, you see. It's all the time. It's like... It's, it's like, it's like Facebook, Facebook, if you're watching this, by the way, these are a bunch of arseholes. I was on Facebook, I actually tell Jenny about this, actually. 
I was on Facebook maybe about a week and a half ago, and there was a there was a video where Chinese people were torturing dogs, burning them alive, basically. They were torturing them, right? So I reported mm-hmm. that. And it went it's not went against our community guidelines. And I'm like, what? They're torturing animals. Well, it's not going against our community guidelines. But then somebody posts a video or a picture of an alien that's instantly turned in. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. the ass world's messed up. It is, it's really messed up. And unfortunately, that's a population that's eager to try to make themselves into something they're not, fuck things up. I mean, look at some of the stalkers we've had because since we started this show. Oh my god, look at look at the problems I've had. Look at the problems I've had. My channel, exactly, I mean, look, exactly. Look. And I, hey, I'm just saying, those people are getting to the point where we're being asked to assist in a police investigation. I know, I know. It's it's ridiculous. No, I got the email this morning. Did you? Hmm. What was what, what, what did it you don't obviously tell too I can't much, really, but... I can't really tell too much, but nevertheless, some people who have caused us problems have caused other people problems, and there's been numerous reports being put out. So doing the due vigilance I have, knowing that these individuals were causing problems, I made sure to send them what I had. Whether or not it leads to something, I don't know. I did my part. Yeah, well. They shouldn't do it. Look, there's a lot of people getting attacked. Their channels got attacked to it there for the most stupidest things. Mm-hmm. Jealousy is one of them. Um, I I just don't know. Honestly, I, you've probably seen my wee statement that I put out in my, my other Ghost Squad Scotland the other day. I'm, I'm just, I, I was very annoyed because I was dealing with stuff. I'm dealing with stuff behind the scenes and stuff like that. But I'm not dealing with camera. I mean, I'm looking at it. Anybody else just see that on about. Chris's camera? What? Well, it was like there was a little face in the corner where you about where your microphone stand is. It looked like a little face just popped out and popped back in the frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just under right, right where your hand is. I think cold here for you, strange you should say that. By the way, it's really, 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 really cold here. So like, I'm sorry to get off track, but I just noticed that, and y'all dots. He apparently listened back to the timestamp, and he started to hear that what I was hearing too. So I don't know. Sometimes it paints to be the wandering mind. <laughs> what time was what time was that? What time was that? Only watch that. Uh... It was just at twenty four minutes. There's nothing there. There's... It was like I know the only thing that would be about that's that size I would imagine would be Jesse. No, she's no one here. She doesn't. She's doing the stairs line next to the radio. Um, my door's shut anyway. Um, maybe it's Nobby. Are you having sex with ghosts again, Chris? Eh, well, I'll tell you something new. See, that's something... Has that ever been actually... That's actually a, a good point, point there. Has that ever been actually recorded by, like, a professional paranormal investigator? Well, if I'm not mistaken, there's actually been a movie where it was meant... It was something that was roughly based on this but you gotta remember who one of the main actors and screenwriters was for it there have been reports as far as actual evidence of that kind of spontaneous activity i am not aware but i do know that dan Aykroyd may have heard of an incident and put that as the blowjob scene in ghostbusters is that the new ghostbusters is that the old ghostbusters no the original First one. Know, I've seen that. I've seen that. The, where, the part you've where watching, Hanson, you've been watching, said, have you been watching something? You've the, never seen that. Is that like a? You have never copy? seen it's the it. blowjob scene in Ghostbusters. The part where all of a sudden his pants, he's lying in bed and his pants are getting undone and pulled down, and all of a sudden you see all right, right, the face. Right, right, right. What the fuck? You didn't realize what that was? No, I didn't actually. I never really thought about that. I never really thought about that. See, there's was your house. I thought it too, but that, that doesn't matter. But here, here's a... It says that there was a black thing the other night there. It makes me wonder because it, it might be my house guest. Robert? He hangs about. Uh, but Why he's is he going down that low? Well? 
Maybe he's looking for Nobby. It's like, why is he one of the midgets that keeps biting you? Oh, look, it's a shadow. Let's see. I don't know. Like it, it, it looked white to me, but maybe. It's not really happening again. You can see there, would you call it that reflecting? Went to the wall. I don't know. Maybe. Well, there's some Facebook user. It was my bin. LOL. Whoever you are. I don't know who you are. Who's stalking us on Facebook? I would go with the stalkers. I'm thinking it. This is what I've decided. I, I was actually talking to Jen. Jenny actually suggested this. We should get pictures and uh, give them all to our fans, you know. I you was away. I'm hate. back. How's Nobby? Uh, a little shrunk right now because it's cold, but. Mm. I'll need to put Nobby's hat back on. There we go. Put Nobby's hat back. Um, there we go. There we go. Christopher. Jenny gets excited when I put this on. Your next door neighbor. Huh? Uh, Jules. Oh, right, right. There you go. Hi, Jules. It's good to see you. Um, but, on Facebook to take a look. Uh, it's, no, honestly, this, this house is this house has haunted. I ken that for a fact. It's been haunted for years. Everybody kens about this house, the ghost in this house. Maybe you should start putting up cameras in your room. Nah. See the Why thing not? is, see the thing is, there could be there could be twenty five ghosts. There could be, in fact, there could be fifty ghosts come into my room at night, right? But I wear one of the blind the things that go with your eyes, and I wear industrial earplugs. How do you? Looks like okay, maybe they're trying to screw with you when you're all plugged up. I'm Get some that's cameras going, man. I, you want to save my... up your money? Waste your money on an Xbox? You get some fucking cameras. I'm saving my money this year. I'm saving my money for a holiday somewhere. But, um, you know. Ireland. But how you tip of the Marlin to there? Tip of the Marlin. I'm sorry, yeah, Jenna. I'm going to take you the time so. for Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms are good. I've not had any Lucky Charms in the ages. They're bloody expensive. Can you how much it is over here for supposedly Lucky Charms? You're talking about 6 or $7. It's going to be a lot like that Charms. over here, too. <clears throat> which is horrendous, you know? Which is crazy. I mean, the, this village I stay in is quite haunted. I can't that. There's a lot of dodgy places. I mean, where the, the ghosts are meant to have been seen and stuff you like know, that. I just had a random thought. What? Going into ETs, right? Speaking of ETs. Lucky Charms. Hey. All right, did you know that if you set out Lucky Charms and an ant gets on it, the ants, other ants will treat it like it's a dead body? And put it in a graveyard. Aye, uh, because Lucky Charms have actually got the same ingredient as weed killer in it. They no, they. I had they have a very similar die. chemical to what ants actually secrete during their last moments of life to let other ants know, really? hey, this is a dead body. You need to get rid of it. Ants make their own graveyards. Here's what I just thought. Say, all right, you hear the reports of like the ant people, right? The ant mm -hmm. aliens. What would happen if we threw Lucky are. Charms on them? But all. Would it have to say it's actually I don't know. It's, I, that's an interesting <laughs> thing. But, but here's an actually interesting thing is see the Lucky Charm cereals that they taste amazing, right? End in the chat that like sugar, right? That they taste amazing. But see when you find out what's in them. See, this is there's the same ingredients that's in them is used in is it weed all? I think it's weed all. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. And it's actually extremely bad for you. What's that Emerald Isle's paranormal there? I'll bring it up. Emerald Isle for you. Dakota, when are you coming to Ireland with Chris? Do you a bald and bonkers on Ireland tour? See, that's the thing. Why don't you why don't you come out and go to Ireland with me? I don't have the funds, man. Oh tap in the Maldivia. Which reminds me, I'm gonna have to renew my passport here soon. That I've just I've, I've sent away from my passport. I've half filled in the form. I need to fill the rest in the morning. Uh, and, no, uh, I need to get a carry on. What a carry on to get a passport. Get it. What do you need to, to get your first passport? I'll tell you the bother I had getting a passport. I'm doing it online because if you do it online, it's like maybe like 15 quid cheaper, right? But it, 
I have to go for a meeting to prove that I'm not a terrorist. It's not as if I'm going to walk into the building dressed as an Islamic terrorist or something with hundreds of sausages strapped in my waist. Get what I mean? But I've actually got to go and prove that I'm British. It's fucking ridiculous. See, if I'd been born in nineteen, if, if I'd been born in nineteen eighty-seven, I wouldn't need to go for an interview. But because I was born in nineteen eighty-one, I have to go in for an interview. That's what I get told today. I don't understand really? it. I don't understand it. Nah, I don't understand it. Oh. I don't know. It is. But there you go. Oh, that's that there. We will do a GoFundMe in Bald and Bonkers Island too. I think that'd be awesome. Aye. We, we could take it, it was at the bloody chapel and all that, and uh, we could tie up Dakota, you know, turn the lights off. We'll be back soon. We go from village people to bondage. What the hell's up with you, man? There's nothing wrong with the village people. The village people are great. Honestly, the village people are brilliant. There's a lot of people in the chat. That's here that the part the you're, people. you're offended at? God, you're turning it into woke culture. Mm. But, uh, like, I don't know. But I think we should do something like that because I, it'd be great if you could come out at the same time as I went out of the island. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's not that dear. You, get economy, you. you get economy plus or something like that. Can I mean? It's like, For what fuck's sake, like, I can't uh, fit on that. You'll be fine. You just need to stick your legs out like something. It'll be fine. It's only Seriously, how many years is it? Usually what is it twenty five years or something? It's can it, can, can, This is how this is amazing. Oh. By the way, I found out I can fly from Glasgow to Dublin for forty five quid, and it takes one hour. No, uh, let's see. Well, I had to probably end up with the layover, but it took uh, when I went over it was about a. Eight-hour flight once we left the states. Well, there you go. Got yeah, I me mean, not a bad. I mean, I, you only need to just sit for eight hours. It'll be fine. Take something to help you sleep. What? I don't know, man. I don't know. What's what that? The you. red lady can have you. There you go. There's Jenny saying the red, red lady can have you. That wasn't Jenny. That was oh, Lulu. No, Sorry, right, I'm going Lulu. Sorry, I'm going mad, you know. Um, but I, the, the red lady can hover way with you, Dakota. You know, yeah, I think I'm it'd old. be awesome. I would like to, we could we could have, we could have a pint of Guinness and we could be alive in the pub next to a crackling fire. And we could interview, we could interview Jenny, Louise, and Niall, Emerald Isles Paranormal. We could interview, we could interview them in the pub, mm. a bald and bunker special. <laughs> Lovely Guinness. That would, would, my brother would be that would be kind of cool mm. to get to do, but yeah. oh. we'll see what the future holds. We'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. But, um, I look, there's loads of things coming up this year. That, there's loads of places I want to go. I want to go to uh, Rosalind Chapel. That would be cool. I uh, Rosalind Chapel is meant to be amazing. I've actually, I've actually got something to tell you, Jenny, but I'll tell you after the show. It's somebody oh. I was talking to about a, a location for you to go to another location in Scotland that I've yeah. managed to worm my way into. Uh, but going I'll, in let, the dark I'll maybe let, But no, but here's the thing. I was going to let Jenny date with our team because it, because it'll be the first time ever it's ever been done. Uh -huh. So I'll tell you about it as after the show. All right. You're better getting okay. experienced ghost hunters into this kind of thing, you know? I'm good at finding places. Uh, yeah. I'll give you that. You pulled some good ones out of your ass. Ah, that's, that's what, what did you think of Leonard Blow last night? He was interesting. He was yeah, interesting. You were, you were like that. You were looking for the third nipple when he was talking about witches. Hey, I've actually had relatives that were burned as witches, so... Was it no the guy with James Bond? Was it Scaramanga? Did you know have, like, a... An apple in his back. I would, Again, that, that James would Bond, going to help us here. Some of the older people in here, the same age as me. James Bond, Scaramanga, the third apple. I think it was the guy with the golden gun. So it's which, one, memory. which Bond was that? The guy with the golden gun. The guy, Christopher Actor. Lee. The guy, oh, Christopher Lee. No. But I think, uh, yeah, we've got, I've, she's, I've actually found some absolutely amazing places. In Scotland, but which I'm not talking about the new. You need you need a vehicle to get to the anyway, so. But 
I found some absolutely stunning places, but I'm going to share that with Emberdale's Paranormal and whatever. Mm. But so what's happening? We should probably get Emerald Isle and Bonkers TV so that way they can maximize their reach, man. We Jenny, we need to get you in Bonkers TV. Dakota will probably message you about that if you want. What you've got a show this week, have you know? Have you no? It's the fourteenth of February. Your new series starts, isn't it? Well, there, there's a special coming together for that, for uh, Valentine's Day. We're also going to be, t- if everything goes out, we're going to be testing our streaming platform distribution as well for it. That's good. And That's trust good me, too. those of you who've been following France and Files, uh, <laughs> this one's going to have a surprise for you. So there you go. Someone's coming forward. That mm-hmm. uh, somebody's coming. Someone's coming forward that hasn't been allowed to speak before, but we found a workaround. That'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. That will be just when we're getting Elena back next. We need Elena if you're watching this, we need to get you back on the show. So we're just, why else well, Elena has here? an open invite, but I know uh her and Danny are both been on the road lately. So yeah. Elena's in yeah, the but... conference circuit. Yeah, she's, she's she's a busy woman. She's a busy woman. I mean, if just think about it in this sense, if we went out of Ireland, Dakota, we could arrange we meet up with Elena. Yeah, a show there. Yeah. Be nice to actually get a yeah, fucking yeah. picture with her instead of what happened to Orlando. God. But you well, know, speaking it's... of UFOs, I know we're getting close to the end of the show, but mm-hmm. did you hear that we have a possible new date for something big about to happen in March? No. What's March? In March, mm, allegedly, keyword allegedly, the big reveal is going to start coming around March twenty first. Oh, well, allegedly, keyword. I hope it comes allegedly. with the medipods. I want the medipods. And yeah, hey, I'm hoping that they got a big and tall version so I can fit. Ah, we'll get two of them together. We'll put your front end in one and another one at the bottom. Just jam them together and turn them on. You know. What would happen if he were to chop my chop off my legs, put my legs in one end and my uh, the rest of my torso in the other? Yeah, we'd all chop in and buy me. Yeah, we'd all chop in and buy a wheelchair. Dots could push you a bit. Oh, poor dots! (laughs) Definitely get his workout. Gentlemen, look, look, update for Jenny. You know, she she likes this work. What is it? Elton John in the Uh conspiracy world. I think it looks lovely. I see, see, you know, put it on right. It's uh, bloody hot. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Not like we don't all know what that's about. Laughing, laugh at he'd laugh. Falling laugh. backwards. Oh, yes. What the fuck? But I think I, I think I honestly, by the way, yeah, I'll, honestly, nuts. I'll tell you something new. By the way, it's a hundred percent nylon. It's lovely. But it's bloody warm. It save your fortune in electricity. That's because keep you warm all day. Yeah, what? that's what happened when I was wearing my long-haired wig for my Halloween costume one year. Thank God I was having to work freezers. I tell at... you what, if I ever come to America, I'm going to come off the plane with this one. God. How you doing? I, I look like a mad, uh, what do you call it, uh, Elton John. I need a pair of big uh, flashy I Elton, glasses. I think Elton would actually be quite offended. It was that simply Alan? So there's Alan in the chat there. I, I'm telling you, I, he, Alan wants a show of this wag. I might, when I go the walk the more, I, I'm going to maybe give him a, what you call it, a show of the wag because I need to do a Chris and Alan show. Mm-hmm. Very itchy. Very itchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, it's lovely. Was it Candle? Was it, what's the song that Elton John done? Was it Candle in the Wind? Nah, or Princess Diana? There you go, ladies and What's gentlemen. That for Diane? Princess, when Princess Diana's funeral, Elton John did a song called Candle in the Wind. Yes, I got a real wise mm-hmm. Princess Diana. That was roughly about just shortly after I was born. So, no, oh, that's right. He's just a Bobby. You wouldn't believe it, ladies and gentlemen. He's just a wee Bobby. And please consider becoming a member of this channel because it's only 99p or 99 cents. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, we're going to have uh, more Bald and Bonkers Network Academy classes up soon. So There you go. If you want to learn stuff about computers and how to stream yourself, Tay. How yeah. to stream. We have business classes. We're going to have some on AI. I think maybe we'll do one to help people get going to independent publishing to maximize themselves, but uh, we'll, th we'll see. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will see. Oh, what's that? Well, you're like 14 or something. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. You see, I look young. See, Pete, Pete, you need to answer something. I'm going to watch one of Mike's naked videos tonight. I'm going to watch. Guys, watch one of Mike's, the Bigfoot's, uh, the naked Bigfoot's videos tonight. Let's watch it all together. But I, I look, I look, uh, what do you call it? Young, you know? Can you pose there? Oh, maybe he was talking about you. You're 14, too. It could be you. I'm 28. If you're 28, we, we can find you a chick well, out there. Of, I'm sure I don't know. Folks home somewhere, but what's yeah, which, how the fuck old is Pete, by the way? Because I'm still curious after we had out Pete, there on. I'm betting Pete is around about 26, 27. Pete, what are you? 26, 27. Hmm. I can tell. Uh, I'm using my psychic to... energies. He does have kind of that uh, attitude about him. But anyway. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, catch you all very soon. Dakota, take it away, man. Anyway, much love. Take care. See you on the flip side.